excited as well. And thank you everyone for joining us today so we can make orchette con broccoli, one of our favorites. So, <clears throat> all right, let's get started. Are you right. making I want Does to just, make first, first let, me, let me just say hello to everybody. Tony Leo, Proclamation Goods co-founder. Uh, very thrilled to be here with you. We've been having a really great time doing some fabulous cook-alongs. This is the second one with Giuseppe and Skyler from Exile Olive Oil. And um, I'm excited to actually be the one cooking this time. I was really jealous when Chris was cooking the last time. So I insisted that I take this time to, to be cooking along. Um, I'm really excited. It's a, obviously it's a regional classic and something that's really close to your heart, Giuseppe. Um, and I'm really excited to be cooking along with you guys. So hope you guys ha have an early glass of wine like we do. I think you guys have a little, like a spritz or something like that. Um, yeah. And uh, let's get cooking. I'm excited to, to see how you guys are going. Perfect. All right, I'm going to let you. So I'm Giuseppe. I'm the co-founder of Exao. And today we are going to make something very easy that anybody can make. We need the just simple ingredient. <clears throat> We're going to need like anchovies, spicy pepper, garlic. Ooh. And exa olive oil, which is our product. And parquette, the pasta. And the main part, which are the broccoli. Just so you guys know, I got the biggest bag of parquette <laughs> I've ever seen. I mean, my hands are not that small. It's like a, like a five pound bag. It was the only one that was there. It's fabulous. We used so, to do that too. Well, here oh, it's hard so to find. Yeah, we can't find it. Hi, Cynthia. So happy she can join us. Um, great. Let's. What do we do? Cut the. Okay. We're going to bend. We're going to be going back and forth between bending and lifting up the um, computer screen. So Giuseppe is going to go ahead and cut the broccoli into little florets. So I we're using the tutti olive oil because it pairs really well with vegetables and also fish. And since we're using anchovies and broccoli today, it's like gonna be the perfect cooking oil and finishing oil. And as far as cooking with olive oil goes, um, there is a myth that people, you shouldn't be cooking with extra virgin olive oil. Um, the flavors are going to disappear or it's not, it's gonna change the oil or maybe it's going to make um, the oil lose some of those, uh, like the polyphenols and the health benefits, but that's not true. You can absolutely cook with extra virgin olive oil, Giuseppe and his family, especially his mom, <laughs> has been cooking with extra virgin olive oil forever. Um, and it really helps to make your food more round and flavorful. It's building, it's basically building those um, layers of flavor in your food. And so the base of a really high quality pasta dish is high quality oil. And in this case, it's going to be the garlic, the anchovies, and the pepperoncino. And if anyone's vegan or vegetarian, you can totally skip the anchovies, not a problem. I think the anchovies are absolutely um, not optional, but <laughs> that, 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 that's up to you. I mean, my, my father would definitely um, be excited that I'm using anchovies. Stacy loves them too. And honestly, I don't think my father cooks with much else than uh, like olive oil, extra virgin, or any type of olive oil in general, unless he's cooking butter. But maybe he's on the screen somewhere. I don't exactly know. I can go to that. <laughs> yeah, we... Yeah, no, not yet. Giuseppe hadn't really used um, butter before we met. I... Like, we had butter in the house, but what we... <laughs> no, I never used it. Always olive oil. But I mean... It, it pairs well with some food, they like it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes like mixing like a butter and olive oil, or I mean, I think it's a- Yeah, thing. exactly. Yes, yeah, I like kind of butter, butter is such a more like Northern thing. So interesting, so cool. Yeah. So let you tell them how you're chopping them. So I'm chopping the garlic and then putting it in here. So I have all the food prepared for later to add in the pan. Which is really helpful because oftentimes when you're making pasta dishes like this, you have to move pretty quickly, adding things to the oil. So it just makes it a lot smoother to do everything ahead of time. Um, he cut them into pretty thin slivers and yeah, it's like little chunks basically. 
And one wool. And one wool clove. Nice. I'm quick with that. I'm quick with those. And you can see the pieces of broccoli, like I said, they're just little florets. Okay. The rough chop is fine. Other part is like the anchovy, I use just half of it. If the probably for some people the taste is gonna be too strong and uh, uh, I don't like it, so helps a lot in the in this dish. Though. So you're gonna put the, you're gonna put two anchovies in? No, just uh, half of it. Okay, he, he's only gonna put half half of an anchovy in, but that's up to you. I mean, some people like it to be more fishy, so they'll add more, but we don't like it too fishy. And then the spicy pepper. You don't have to touch it. You just have to it. Just don't touch your eyes, right? I mean, that's the yeah, don't touch your eyes. And after you can grab like this and put it. Nice. All right, cool. We're gonna reserve that. Great. Ready. All right. So our ingredients are all chopped and ready to go in the pan. And we're gonna move over to the stove now. If your water is not boiling, get it going. Get that. So now. Yeah. We'll wait. You gotta wait for me. I have to move. I'm moving. Hold on. I'm actually on the. I'm on the anchovy stage. We're right there. transporting over to the um, cooking area. Uh oh! I got two anchovies. Well, it's up to you. I mean, if you really like anchovies, that is it's your funny. prerogative. Isn't the rule you can always add more, you just can't take it away? I think that's the thing. So I think I'll start like easy with it. Like I don't know this dish. I don't know this dish well, so. Today we are using this awesome pot that is made by Proclamation Good. Oh, there it is. Our seven quart. Yeah. It's a beast. It's the workhorse of your kitchen. We love it. We love okay, it. So so you're putting, okay, wait. So my boiling water is going. I'm pouring in what, everything here? All the broccoli, just the broccoli. Just the broccoli. Yes. All right, look at that. Simple. Yeah. I'm, fo I'm following you guys. I'm like, no steamer basket, no nothing, just throw no, it. No. Just throw inside. inside. You're gonna see the water getting kind of green. Little and uh, add some salt, like this amount. It's beautiful, okay, cool. So a whole mess of salt, right? Yeah, how about how much did you put in just that thing? Just like a, a quarter of a spoon, probably more. I'm gonna assume that this is probably about right. Yeah, okay, cool. Like maybe a tablespoon. I definitely did a tablespoon, easy. I don't ever measure salt. Like Giuseppe's mom just kind of like throws it in the The thing is, that we used to do is always to taste it, to check the salt if uh, it's, it's perfect for you. So taste, so taste the water. So taste the salt then. No, taste, no. Sorry, no. taste the water. See, because you want the water to taste like the sea. See? Like, like yeah. this. Yeah. 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 Wait so am, I, am I stirring this yet? Okay, we'll see. Just make sure the salt is dissolved, but you don't have to stir it continuously. And you see Giuseppe's tasting the water right now to make sure it's salty enough. It's it's another little bit needed. I'm gonna get a better spoon. Let's see how salty my water is. You're gonna notice that the color of the broccoli is changing. It's turning very green. So good. In another pot, in another pan, this one, it's always proclamation good that you love so much. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going stainless with you, man. Perfect. <laughs> they get hot so fast, and that's why we like it, because normally it takes forever for water to boil, but with this pot, it boils really fast. Yeah, it's cool. And with the, the stainless, the stainless, it's always good to sort of start the, the heat like a little bit lower and kind of bring it up first. Yeah. Like, you know, that's the best way. If you want to maintain the pants to last like a really long time, and this is not just proclamation goods. This is kind of the oh. rules of, of stainless. Is yeah. Like bring that heat up like nice and uh, easy and then get it up to heat. 
before you start adding the oil. So what are we doing here? What's next in the pan? So just heat the pan up slowly, like you said. And I'm happy you brought that up because oftentimes when you're cooking with, when people are cooking with extra virgin olive oil, they turn the heat up really high. Like it doesn't matter if you have an electric stove, gas stove, and they just crank up the heat and then the oil starts burning. And they're like, well, how, I can't cook with extra virgin olive oil. And it's like, no, 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 no. You can cook with extra virgin olive oil. You just need to stop putting your pan on high. It has to be on low, medium, low. And then once you add your ingredients, it's going to cool down the temperature of the oil and then you can bring it back up. But Giuseppe's mom and us, we fry in olive oil. So you can definitely cook with it. <laughs> so, so question, on the, on the anchovy, did you guys cut it? Did you guys cut it really fine or did you chop it fine? I sort of like had my head turned away for a second there. For the garlic? The anchovy. Um, yeah, it's chopped really fine. It's also going to dissolve. Let me it's going to dissolve. Where is it? What? Oh, the anchovy. Here. I don't know if you can see it. But it's chopped super fine right here. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. Look at that. So we start to add the, the olive oil in the pan. And don't be shy with the oil because this is what's going to help create the flavors for this dish. I saw the, um, so you're four, yeah, so you're four tablespoons of olive oil. Okay, cool. And and show me. So I got the garlic and the anchovy going in there now? All right. Yeah. Excellent. The, the yeah, spice. The anchovies. The un the unsung hero. Yeah. <laughs> kind of all of the small sustainable fishes are really delicious. Yeah. I'm scared of anchovies. Why? I don't know. They freak me out. <laughs> well, they, you see, there's the thing. I mean, that's, that's, that's actually good. So if you haven't really spent any time with them, you have like the rest of your life to learn and love anchovies. I, I like them in Caesar <laughs> salad dressing, but that is about well, then, so then you can't tell me that you don't like anchovies. Yeah, that's true. I think that it's a consistency thing. Like if I were to get them like a big chunk of it on top of a Caesar salad, I, I, I would freak out. But it's okay, like probably chopped up like this, right? You hardly even get to experience like a, I'll a tell you, bite of it. I will I agree with that. Through my palate. I'm, I agree. I am with that because... I also think that they're too fishy, so it's overbearing. It's too yeah. much when you're eating them. So like, if it's in salad dressing, it's fine. If it's in a dish like this, it's fine. But that's why we also only add half, because if we added the whole thing, it would just be so too fishy for my, my yeah. personally. But there's other people that absolutely love them. <laughs> and then meanwhile, that this is cooking, and the broccoli is cooking, and the bread too, we grate a little bit of cheese. We use Parmigiano Reggiano only, which is a kind of light and match perfectly with the, the orecchiette. With I'm like so mise en place over here. Like I've got like a, what, what is the mise, uh, the equivalent of mise en place in Italian? Say again? What is the equivalent of uh, mise en place in Italian? That I just, don't know if they have a term for it. Because Honestly, or maybe they do, we just don't know it. Maybe it's just like a less, yeah, putting everything in its place just seems so, I don't know, French? Yeah. What's um, the difference you, between Parmesan and um, Parmigiano Reggiano? What's the difference? We, sorry, before we answer that, turn, if you have your skillet going still with the garlic and anchovies and um, pepperoni, you don't turn off the heat. We don't want the garlic to get too, um, cooked, too brown and burn. Everything's looking okay. good over here. Okay. I, lo I love that you guys are cooking on coils. You know, I think it's, it's really important um, for people. Everybody's household is completely different. And, you know, it's interesting with like proclamation is designed to be used in like any type of heat scenario. I mean, pretty much from a cooktop to a, like a 
um, a campfire. And so yeah. uh, understanding where the heat is on the different substrates of like the coils or like on um, induction, all of this proclamation goods are really great for every uh, surface, but it's a different cooking experience for sure. Yeah, we cook with them on gas, electric, um, like glass top, and then the coils which we have now, we just moved into a new place. Cool. And I don't know why they put, didn't put gas in here, but whatever. And right. they work really well on everything. So thank you for that, making mm -hmm. our life easier. Mm -hmm. But just that you, like each time you make something, you have to become accustomed to cooking on that surface. You do. Coils are, coils are tricky after gas. Like understanding the coils, like after you've been using gas is definitely like a tricky thing. Yeah. So, okay, what are we doing with the cheese now? What's happening? This is, is gonna, is gonna wait a little bit here yeah. on this uh, little pot, little bowl. It's um, grated. It's grated it's very finely. Sorry. And I would say this is about maybe a quarter cup. And technically, we are breaking the rule of no cheese with fish in Italian cooking, but there are a few exceptions which you should talk about. Uh, uh, this on this dish in preferably that's why we use a little bit of uh, uh, anchovy. I normally exaggerate with anchovy, but because I use also Parmigiano Reggiano, I prefer to uh, use less anchovy just because to match perfectly it has to be like uh, lighter the taste. It's lighter and like more, you know, so I can eat more eventually. Oh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I've definitely been carbo loading over these past few weeks. I've, <laughs> I took, a, took a pretty long break from pasta in general, but um, that's all changed. So, especially with you guys, you got like pasta dishes, making some yeah. beautiful things. Like carbonara was delicious. Yeah, yeah. We love to make carbonara. A lot. And a particular thing is that a lot of fun when I use the... I used to cook the guanciale or the bacon. It used to stick. Okay. On this one, doesn't. That's good, man. I love that. Yeah, it's perfect. Look at that. And the, and the stainless steel stays always like bright. Yeah, that's It cool. doesn't get like blurry or something weird. It stays like look. And even and even when you do, like there's ways. It's always like perfect. I like it. Man. Love it. Thanks for so the Now I'm gonna wait the orecchiette to check the weight. I give you some direction for it. Yep. So I normally use for two people uh, 200 gram. <laughs> Perfect. I, this is, I mean, I think shelter in place first purchase was the scale because everybody's making salad. Yeah, the so. Analogic one, you see. <laughs> it's all still one. So if you want the gram are about almost eight ounces of our kitchen. So everybody's got to be familiar with a bit more. measuring grams now with uh, for their sourdough starters and such. Wow. So yeah, I, I measured out 350. Is that, that, that's good? That's what you guys called for? Did we do three? Oh, because you're doing four servings. Okay, yeah. Perfect. Okay. This recipe is flexible. Okay, it is now flexible. we add the, the orecchiette inside the broccoli. In all, the, all, in the, all together. In the water. Wow. That's easy. Yeah, easy. We cook in there like about five minutes. All right. And in the meantime, you can either get your skimmer or your ladle. I've got a slotted spoon. I think I'll be fine. Okay, what did, what, I'm looking at the chats right the chat right now. Cynthia said her husband cooked homemade pasta without salted water the other night, and I was offended. Cynthia, you know that you're married to a Frenchman, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
That's amazing. Yeah, you got to salt that water to, yeah. I mean, you, you go through the, go through the motions of making the pasta and then don't salt the water. How crazy. Yeah. So we've been actually making quite a bit of fresh pasta and orecchiette is, it's, a, it's really difficult to make well. So it's yeah. an easy shape, but it's not easy to make really well because you want to, you want to create that like perfect, um, almost like a mini cup. Orecchiette in Italian, it means little ears. Ears, ears right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we like to think of it as a cup because it's, it's the perfect shape to hold all that sauce. Yes. And in South Italy, especially in Calabria, they serve it with a lot of seafood. And it catches all that sauce from the seafood perfectly. But it's really hard to keep them in that shape because if the dough gets too soft, then it collapses. It doesn't, it doesn't hold that shape very well. Wow. Um, and we do have semolina flour, which is way more yellow than regular flour. I'll show you. Yeah, I tried to find some semolina at the supermarket the other day, and they were out. Yeah, so it's super, super yellow. Yeah, that's glorious. I actually, um, I want to give a shout out over to the culinary artistas and to Chef Eliza, who we did a cook along with a couple of weeks ago. And she, I made, actually for the very first time, rolled out my first pasta noodles. And oh, really? I was, my mind was blown. I'm like, I'm Italian, and it's taken me this long, at almost 48 years old, that I have not rolled out my own pasta before. And I was, it, how simple it was, and how satisfying it was, was amazing. So, yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to do that together. I want to see your process on the orchetta. Yeah. Totally. We have a lot of friends uh, in our community that make amazing pasta. So that's who we've been learning cool. from just going on their instagrams or literally dming them and be like my dough is too soft like, what do i do how can i fix it uh and learning a lot about how flour behaves yeah right? because we're not big bakers and we get, we're not like in southern italian cuisine they don't make a lot of fresh a ton of fresh pasta mm -hmm. i do have the, no the noodles that are um native to calabria like what are a few like macaroni macaroni calabresi or polish uh, or filatei. Uh, I'm a or fan, potelli, I'm a fan. calabresi. Uh, I'm very fan of all the pasta shapes. And I don't think that there's a pasta shape that I've met that I don't like. <laughs> like now, I am. I have no judgment towards any pasta shape. Like, it is, like if you show me a new one, I'm like, yeah, bring it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking with a uh, Joe Sasto has been. Um, he, he's such a dynamite guy. He's been using the proclamation. He makes some really interesting, colorful pasta things. Check him yeah. out on um, on Instagram. It, stuff is beautiful. Yeah. So I'm, uh, and now I think I'm, I might be obsessed. I, if forget the sourdough, you can go over this way. I'm just going to start like making my own pasta now. Like, yeah. and, it's so like, fun. The color like, also gets your eyes, you know, your attention. So I bet they heat on for the pan when there is the garlic and uh, the anchovy and all that base. Now it's almost time to move the broccoli and the pasta in the other pot. Even, even like, a, how, how finished should the pasta be? That's what I'm so now about. I'm gonna use, Wait, uh, say again. So the pasta is like, it's not cooked, right? Completely. No, it's like we're a, gonna finish to cook the pasta in the pan. So make sure this pan is on medium heat, okay? Okay. Have a needle. Uh, the ladle. Ladle. I get a little bit of broth from here to uh -huh. here. And if a tip, add the water before it gets too hot because you don't want to add water to super, super hot oil. Okay. All right. How many, how many ladles full? Like two, three? Uh, Two, three. Okay, cool. All right. I like it. And now it's show time. We grab everything from here and move in here. In the skimmer. Okay, cool. All right. We're in business now. Excellent. Show time. I like it. Yeah. 
And Giuseppe just turned up the heat of this pan to medium high. Yep, I'm in. I'm, I'm, I'm tracking. I hope you guys are all following along at home. This is fascinating. I, I've never done this cooking this way, and I'm just so excited to, to get to uh, the finished product. But that, ultimately, it's all about the journey, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. As long as you're having fun, take the time, learn something new. That's what that's that's what life's about. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, it's it's true. The journey is the best part for me. The the best time for me. Let's back to the the destination. Just to dream about it, and to learn and to see new stuff. Definitely. Oh, and one day we'll all get to travel again, huh? Or freely travel, should I say? I see Jennifer Hernandez over there. I see her. I see her name. I don't see you personally, but I hope you're doing great. Yeah. <laughs> old, uh, Jennifer Hernandez is an old uh, classmate of mine from Brooklyn Friends. Brooklyn, shout out to Friends School and uh, all my New York peeps. Hope everybody's doing great. It's a tough one out there. Yeah. As you can see, it's changing the colors. Start to get very green. Okay, so I'm like, yeah, I'm stirring now. Better uh, to add uh, just a little bit of water at a time, because like this, uh, you can always add something, you know, but if you add too much water, it's hard to remove it. When it gets dry, try to add a little bit more. Doesn't have to be soupy. Okay. Uh, a little bit and so we're kind of, oh, he gave it a rest for a second. Oh, what's he got going on there? Black pepper. Okay. <laughs> Just a little. It's the black pep. It's the black pepper break, and maybe like a sip of wine break. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> At this time, normally I remove the big uh, piece of garlic. Uh-huh. Okay. Thank you. Cheers, everybody. I miss you. Okay, let's check the salt if it's good. And also the texture of the orecchiette. It's coming. Add a little salt of mine. I got a couple more noodles in here. There you go. Skylar, I'm still waiting on my Parmigiano Reggiano question. Oh, please ask. I'm sorry. Um, what's the difference between Parmesan, like grated Parmesan that you get at a store and, I mean, obviously we all know fresh Parmigiano is way better, but, um, it's, give me the lowdown. It's different cheese. So, are you, you're talking about Parmesan that's spelled with an S, right? Yes. Okay, so that's, I'm sorry to tell you this, <gasps> it's fake cheese. It's Shut made up. from powdered milk. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. Don't you craft. Ruining, ruining my friend. So, par Parmigiano Reggiano. Actually, you should, you should tell them. Parmigiano Reggiano is made with milk. And in an area of Emilia Romagna only, uh, there are only some consortia that can make it. And this uh, protect origin denominated protect origin, let's call it. Um, and uh, doesn't have lactose inside, so also it's perfect for the people who are lactose intolerant. And uh, it's great. Um, for a lot of people, it's considered the best cheese in the world. Because also, it's like- a, I agree with that, for sure. During the time, 
that goes from 12 to 36 months, and there are also some that stay for different several years now. Um, no, I have a question. There's some yeah. of the pieces of the uh, the broccoli stems that are still. Are they going to just completely disintegrate? You can smash if if, uh, if you like. Oh, just mush them in. Okay, good. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was doing. I just want to make sure I'm doing it right, guys. Yeah. I like them. So. See the color is turning very green right now. Yeah, it's getting pretty green. I like the broccoli stems. It's almost. Good. Really? Because I like texture, um, but it depends on your personal taste. I like pasta. Just a little bit of water because uh, it's almost ready. And Bridget, we actually have, I, we'll touch on it at the end with the, che the cheese and olive oil and Italian products. Please remind me. I will. Okay. So I want to make sure that my my uh, pasta is not getting so um, watery. I want to make sure it's not so watery. Let, let me take a look at what he's doing. Hey, Bridge, can you scroll back to their um, window? Here? Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at you, man. That's why you add a little bit of water. I'm, flip, I'm flipping like Giuseppe. Look at me. Look at him go. <laughs> yeah, that's the way. Bravo. Okay, now it's cheese time. Cheese time. Woo! Turn off the heat. If your pasta's cooked, turn off the heat and then add the cheese. Let me make sure my pasta's cooked here. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yo, your timing is amazing. You've done this. You've done this before. Yeah, he does this at least fourteen times a week. <laughs> well, you ready to play? But at least you've at least got to have like room for me to come over one time, then. <laughs> I'll wear a mask. I promise. Okay. This is also in the pan. Okay. I'm sorry. Did you put the cheese? You put the cheese in. You already put the cheese yeah. in and stirred it. Ah, I'm behind here. See? Oh, yeah. That is beautiful. I want some. Oh, my goodness. You gotta be kidding me. Look at this. T, I'm so oh. jealous. Yeah. Hmm? <gasps> Yum. Yeah, that's the stuff right there. I know. I know. I know. They're brilliant. Excel olive oil and, and Skylar and Giuseppe. They know what is going on. And now the most important part. The drizzle. Here we go. I'm missing the drizzle. Yeah. And you can see it gets really beautiful and oozy. And there we go. That looks so well, good. It's time to see if it's good. Yeah, we're in the forks. I'll see what we got in there. Try it? I'm going to try it. Okay. Look at that. Fabulous. After you add a little bit of oil, just stir it around. I'm going to drizzle. I'm drizzling people. That was so quick. You're using, too. You're, gonna, you're using the Lena, Tony, so yours is going to be more, have a little bit more of the tomato that the Lena has and be a little bit more round versus the tutti, which is pairing really well with the green vegetable notes that are in the broccoli and it's pulling out the flavors of the anchovy. I'm very excited too about like the, these plates. I registered for a year and day. They're a, they're a local Bay Area group too, and the, the plates are beautiful. So let's see what we got here. Ready? Yeah, let's taste. Mm, it's a little bit. Come on. That's <laughs> delicious. That is delicious. Mm, mm -hmm. mm. Mm. 
I feel like three percentage points more Italian right now. Just, just <laughs> hanging out with you guys on the phone. So um, I wanted to like really thank you guys for showing us and just give me one second. Yeah. Oh no, what's he gonna do? It is our dinner bell, which is our call together. So everybody, I hope that you're eating and having a wonderful time and to ring the bell. Proclamation! Yeah, come and get it, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Another thing that I recommend is when you finish, to pour a little bit of raw uh, black pepper. Black pepper, yeah. As a garnishing, and uh, it looks better also on the plate. I like it, man. Yeah. So, before I forget that note about Italian products. So, Italian products. If you see mozzarella or Parmigiano Reggiano, Italian olive oil, Italian olives, anything that has a provola, something that has an Italian name that's in a supermarket, um, the Italian government has a law basically that says only products that are made from food in Italy, or this, and this applies to bags also, this applies to clothes also. So only products that are actually made within the country or from products that are from Italy can be marked as Italian. Yeah, exactly. So that's the other thing. When you see Parmesan with the S, Parmesan, in the supermarket, it's not an Italian product. It's an American product with an Italian American name on it. And if you like that type of cheese, that's totally fine. No, nothing against it. It's just about making sure that we're understanding the marketing techniques that companies are going after and how they're publicly representing Italian products and the integrity that companies are showing through being 100% transparent with those products. I appreciate that. Do you have anything else to contribute to that? No. Sorry. We have very strong opinions about it, but <laughs> as we should. I just when you're shopping for products in general, um, as olive oils, make sure that it has um, so you, like it says extra virgin olive oil here and then on the back it has the harvest date which is really important because you want to know when it was harvested and then we also put bottle date it's okay if it just has a harvest date that's totally fine but you it's nice to have all of those dates on there and then we also have product of Italy and the acidity level all right and if a product, if an olive oil doesn't have the acidity level on the back of the bottle, it's okay, but go on their website and see if, if that information is public. Because if it is public, then they're being 100% transparent and they're giving you all the information about their product. And this applies for everything, cheeses, everything. That's beautiful. I, I always get to make sure that you know where your food is coming from. And yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. You guys, cheers. And so Yay. much love over here from me and from Chris and from Claire and Bridget, everybody in the proclamation team and everybody that's come to join us. I hope you guys enjoy this dish that was so lovingly prepared by Giuseppe and Skylar and XL Olive Oil. So I look forward to the next one. And so to, to, to wrap up, does anyone have any questions? Any questions? We're good? Cool. Cheers. Thank you so much Thank for joining you. in our first Zoom. That was nice. Club. Thank you. Happy Friday. Thank you. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend, Thank everybody. Bye, all. Bye.